Sonic's been on something of a hot streak for the past couple years now. When Sonic Forces came out in 2017, there were a good few years where that game was pretty much all we had in terms of new Sonic releases. And Sonic Forces wasn't exactly, uh, well... You know what it was. Thankfully these days, Sonic fans don't really have that problem anymore. It seems like new Sonic stuff is pretty much coming out every other week. It's a great time to be a Sonic fan, although that isn't to say that everything's been perfect. This is a video about Sonic the Hedgehog after all. But I think I've gone long enough without complaining. It's been, what? 30 seconds? I think that's a new personal best. Remember Sonic Frontiers Update 3? What the hell happened there? I mean, it was pretty fun, don't get me wrong, but there is just no way they playtested this. Let's see, uh, oh, Sonic Dream Team came out, which is proven to be really good, actually. I mean, it's got Cheese the Chow in it, so it's pretty much an automatic 10 out of 10 in my book. There was one uh, extremely minor issue with the game, uh, that being that you can only play it on iOS devices. Whoops-a-daisy, hope you like playing on a fucking phone. And of course Sonic Origins Plus came out, which was, uh... Wah, wah, wah. Will you cut that out? And last but not least, we saw the release of Sonic Superstars, which turned out, uh, pretty good, actually. I mean, yeah, it's clearly not for everyone, which, you know, different strokes, whatever. But uh, I think we could all agree that this is a little bit extreme. Sonic Superstars is one of the worst games I have ever played. To be fair, Superstars does have its issues. For example, this game's bosses are kind of... Terrible. I don't know about you guys, but I like my classic Sonic bosses pretty quick and to the point. Bop, 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 dead. Or, you know, maybe a little more involved in that, but you get the picture. Usually with classic Sonic bosses, there's some kind of trick you can use to finish them off pretty quickly. But in Sonic Superstars, it just goes on and on and on. And yeah, I'm looking right at you, asshole. But on the plus side, the music often takes inspiration from Sonic 4. You know, everybody's favorite and most beloved Sonic game. Sonic 4. I know taste in music is incredibly subjective and everything, and no, I'm not a musician or a music theorist or one of those little bitches with those sticks, but some of this music is, uh... I mean, I'm not gonna say it's objectively bad. I might be thinking it, and it might be true, but I'm not gonna say it. That being said, as a fan of 2D Sonic, this game is still pretty fun, all things considered. I will say $60? Eh, I don't think so. But if you could find it on sale, I'd say give it a shot. Anyway, Sonic Superstars plays host to plenty of secrets and Easter eggs that you might have missed. So, as the resident Cybershell understudy, I thought I'd once again take it upon myself to entertain you all with some more pointless Sonic the Hedgehog minutia. So you know what? Let's make a deal. If I mention something that you don't already know, then you have to like this video. And if you do already know everything I mentioned here today, uh, then touch grass and like the video anyway, you fucking nerd. Now let's start with something simple about this game, its name, Sonic Superstars. You might remember this if you were following Sonic News at the time, but when Sonic Superstars was announced, its official website went live. Everything seemed pretty much normal, that is, except for the thumbnail for one of the promotional videos hosted on the site. Yeah, not Sonic Superstars, but Sonic Onion. Oh wait, no. <sighs> Sonic Orion. Disappointed! But this was clearly a mistake because soon after the website went live, this thumbnail was quickly changed. This might have been an internal name for Sonic Superstars, or maybe they just changed the name at the last minute. But you know, I actually don't mind the title Sonic Orion. Not really sure why they didn't just stick with this, but you know, whatever, I guess Superstars is fine. Now as you all are probably aware by now, Sonic Superstars features the return of Fang the Sniper, or as he's now known, Fang the Hunter. I kind of went over this in my Sonic the Fighters video, but yeah, Fang is back after a near 30 year absence. So that's pretty cool, always good to see older, obscure Sonic characters make a comeback. Although, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed that he's not playable here. Maybe if they ever do a Sonic Superstars Plus, yeah. he'll have another shot. But what I find to be more interesting is that Fang isn't the only character making their return in Sonic Superstars, because this game sees the return of Metal Knuckles and Tails Doll for the first time since Sonic R in 1997. Or, as you probably know, it's the best game of all time. Does Sonic Superstars have a balloon popping mode? And no, I didn't think so. Uh, I actually play Sonic R more for the plot. Metal Knuckles and Tails Doll have made appearances throughout the comics. One particular Tails Doll appearance comes to mind. I think I might want to 
throw one of these on there. But as far as the games go, their debut in Sonic R was their one and only appearance until now. Unless you want to count these, in which case... Shut up, you stupid bitch! Anyway, Metal Knuckles is actually playable to some extent. You can only play as him in the game's battle mode, which is pretty much the worst shit I've ever played in my life. But on the bright side, uh, this is Knuckles, and uh, yep, he is Metal. So that'll be $59.99. Unfortunately, Tails Doll is not playable at all, even in the game's battle mode. Instead, he appears as the Golden Badnik in Pinball Carnival Act 2, even though he's not really gold. I'd call this more of an orange. He could even damage you, although you have to go pretty far out of your way to make that happen. He's pretty fucking pathetic, actually. Which, to be fair, is consistent with his appearance in Sonic R. But along with these two, with Metal Sonic being in the game's battle mode and Egg Robo appearing in Trip Story, everyone from Sonic R is here and accounted for in Sonic superstars, which, uh, now that I've said it out loud, I realize is a completely pointless observation. But what is life, if not a series of pointless observations? Instead of Tails Doll, the game's battle mode features a brand new metal variant of Tails, appropriately named, uh, Metal Wiles? No, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? <laughs> No, it's actually Metal Tails, but let's be honest, that does seem like some shit that Sega would do. We also have Metal Amy, Metal Trip, and uh, Metal Knights for some reason. Now, if you don't want to play the game's battle mode, which, let's face it, you don't, you still have the opportunity to see these characters in the main game, because your battle mode avatar serves as the basis for the Cyber Station boss. So if you want, you could fight a giant Metal Knuckles, or Metal Sonic, or some freak bitch hybrid of the two. Please kill me. Uh, maybe later, I'm kind of busy. While I'm on the subject, if you're a fucking idiot who bought the digital deluxe version of Sonic Superstars, or in other words, uh, me. Mecha Sonic from Sonic 2 will be available to you as a battle mode skin. That's actually pretty cool, although there's a bunch of other robotic Sonics I would have preferred instead. This would have been the perfect opportunity to bring back Rocket Metal from Sonic the Fighters. So close, and yet so far. Anyway, one of the other features included in the Sonic Superstars Digital Deluxe Edition is this rabbit skin for Sonic. If you use this skin, the in-game text even refers to the character as rabbit instead of Sonic like usual, and it even features some unique animations. Well, as it happens, this rabbit look was actually one of the initial designs considered for Sonic when he was being conceptualized for the first Sonic game. This rabbit version of Sonic still would have had his trademark speed, but he wouldn't have rolled into a ball, instead favoring a mechanic where he stretched out his ears to pick up and throw shit, which actually served as inspiration for another Sega Genesis game, Rystar. Or maybe Ristar? Uh, I guess it's Rister? Dumbest thing I've ever heard, but okay. Because, as we all know, rabbits can't curl into balls. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. I see a lot of people online refer to this character as Feel the Rabbit, which, first of all, gross. But the origin of this name stems from the prototype name for Rystar, which was originally called Feel. And instead of the normal Rystar design, we would have gotten this looker. Although this design is more rabbit-like and even used Sonic shoes at one point in development. Well, if you're not a fan of the name Feel the Rabbit, according to Naoto Oshima's Twitter, this character's name was probably gonna be Max, or Max's? Maybe a typo or something? I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. But he also confirmed that Max the Rabbit was the first design ever implemented into an actual build of Sonic 1. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we'll ever see this build, and no evidence has surfaced of it over the years. But, uh, Sega, if you're watching this, if you're looking for money, I am a YouTuber after all, so... Give me a call, let's work something out. But yeah, Max the Rabbit makes his first official appearance in Sonic Superstars outside of his original concept sketch, which also appears in Sonic Origins. Apparently this sketch made its first public appearance in a Japan-exclusive History of Sonic VHS tape, which was distributed as a pre-order bonus for Sonic 3 in 1993. So I guess you could argue that this is his first quote-unquote official appearance if you want to be a... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, it's kind of heavy. If you want to be a... DICK ABOUT IT! <clears throat> These days you can find this tape in its entirety on YouTube, I've put a link to it in the description. It's obviously all in Japanese, but it's still a really interesting watch if you're into that kind of thing. Alright, anyway, let's talk about something else. If you've played through the game, you'll surely remember this part of Frozen Base, where Sonic and company hop into an Eggmobile to play a space shooter level. Well, the cool thing about this is that the specific Eggmobile used for this level changes depending on your character, with each one referencing that character's game of origin. For example, Sonic 1 for 
Sonic, Sonic 2 for Tails, you get the idea. That is, except for Trip, who pilots this thing from Sonic 3, which is called the Egg Scorcher Mark 3. Uh, not to be confused with the Egg Scorcher Mark 1, or the Egg Scorcher Mark 2, or the Egg Scorcher Mark 4. Only three easy payments of $17.99 plus shipping and handling. Call now. Anyway, this level in and of itself is a giant reference to the 1986 Sega arcade game Fantasy Zone, a game which at first glance has pretty much nothing to do with Sonic, except that its main character Opa Opa was kind of Sega's unofficial mascot before Sonic or even Alex Kidd. Now that being said, Opa Opa has made appearances in Sonic games before. For one, he's a playable character in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. I feel like there's an Among Us joke to be made here, but I'm gonna restrain myself. Although he wasn't brought back for the sequel, instead only making a small cameo, I guess to make room for Danica Patrick so she can canonically murder I I from Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> Fallout. Opa Opa also appears as an extreme gear in the original Sonic Riders, which is kind of a disturbing visual, not gonna lie. There's plenty more crossover between Sonic and Fantasy Zone, but as far as Sonic Superstars goes, Opa Opa himself doesn't make an appearance, but they did bring back the enemies from the first level of Fantasy Zone, even utilizing the same movement patterns. The bosses of the first two levels of the game also make appearances here, although both of them have had a bit of a makeover to better suit the Robotnik aesthetic. One thing worth noting is that according to Shinichi Higashi, the guy who originally created Fang for Sonic Triple Trouble in the 90s, when he was being conceptualized, Fang's head was very loosely based on Opa Opa, which, uh, let's just say I don't think I would have guessed that. Uh, maybe this'll help. Uh, yeah, I can kind of see it, if you, like, squint your eyes and kind of just don't look at this part. But with Fang coming back to Superstars after all this time, I guess it's kind of fitting to have Fantasy Zone come back too. Kind of got the whole full circle thing going on, which is pretty cool. Here's a quick one for you. You know Sonic's typical idle animation, right? Where he taps his foot and checks his uh, imaginary watch. Then he'll lay down after a while and look all pissed off. Well, to absolutely nobody's surprise, this idle animation made the cut for Sonic Superstars, along with some other animations from Sonic 2. But remember in Sonic 3 when Sonic had that weird, wrong idle animation where he does whatever this is supposed to be? Well, wonder no more, because this animation made the cut here in Sonic Superstars 2, serving as Super Sonic's idle animation. I guess this whole time it was a finger snap. Not really sure what else I was expecting, but it does complete the Bully Maguire aesthetic that I didn't realize I needed from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. My back! Oh, my back! Now here's something pretty fucked up. If you've ever fucked around with cheat codes in the classic Sonic games, you've probably experienced one of their debug modes at some point. This is pretty much God mode, where you can fly around the level, clip through walls, and place a bunch of different objects. And let me tell you, it's a lot of fun to dick around in this mode. You can really get up to some wacky shenanigans. I'm sorry, but we can't be friends if you've never spammed 400 rings in one spot to create one all-powerful, eardrum-shattering ultra ring. Well, the good news is, debug mode is here and accounted for in Sonic Superstars. If you've already beaten the game, on the main menu, press XXYYXXXX, and you'll be treated to... Uh, this. Well, I guess treated isn't exactly the right word, because this is lame as fuck. Yeah, here you won't be pushing the game to its limits like a typical Sonic debug mode. Instead, what we're left with is a level select, which is completely useless since you have to beat the game to even use the debug mode in the first place, and an extremely basic sound test. Usually with Sonic sound tests, along with level music, you get boss themes, menu music, sound effects, and even an occasional unused track, like the Hidden Palace theme in Sonic 2. And in Sonic Superstars, you get level themes, and that's it. And keep in mind, there are a bunch of unused songs in the game's data that would have been perfect for this sound test. Ooh, a different opening theme. Let's listen to this. Ah. Now I see why it was unused. But then again, I don't know, some people seem to be under the impression that this debug mode was left in by accident, which let me remind you that the devs of Sonic Superstars are the same guys that made this, so 
I'm just saying it wouldn't be the first mistake they've made. Now that's most of what I wanted to talk about today, but let's rapid fire some of the smaller stuff. First of all, this game features these awesome cell shaded comic book skins. I actually really like this look. I wouldn't be against it if this was just how the characters looked by default. You could have claimed these skins on Steam for like 20 minutes after the game went up, but for whatever reason they were removed and haven't been available for download since. But if you're playing on console, unless you pre-ordered the game through Amazon and happen to live in Japan or the UK, the only method of obtaining these skins is if you live in the US and redeem them through a rewards program for Kroger stores? Uh... Okay. But even still, this program is temporarily offline at the time of this recording, so in actuality, nobody can get these skins right now. And even if you could, it would run you... $40? Fuck no. And if you can't even sell me on some cool overpriced Sonic shit, you know you fucked up. And you know what? I'm so pissed off that to make a stand, I'm never gonna buy anything Sonic related ever again. Anyway, other than that, these creepy looking Golden Capital loop-de-loops were repurposed from Sonic 1 concept art. In fact, it seems like the entire zone takes inspiration from this sketch if the flavor text is anything to go by, which describes the stage pretty much exactly as it appears in Sonic Superstars. It's pretty cool to see this concept art fully realized, although I think we could have done without the auto-scrolling portions as much as I love doing nothing. On a similar note, although it's a different color, the Sand Sanctuary Snake is based on this random Sega Harmony art, at least according to the digital art book that came with the digital deluxe edition of the game, so uh, yeah, that's a thing. Oh yeah, and I guess I should mention that Sonic takes out his wiener in this game. You what?! Yeah, for those of you who haven't heard about this yet, if you reach top speed with Sonic when he enters this run animation, there's a chance that for just two frames, he'll hold up a chili dog. This even works with the Lego Sonic skin, although it doesn't seem like it works with the rabbit skin for some reason. I'm pretty sure that this is the first time Sonic's affinity for chili dogs has been referenced in the classic Sonic games, so it was pretty much already canon anyway. So yeah, that's pretty fucking weird, but there you go. Sonic's glorious wiener. When I first saw this on Twitter, I legitimately thought it was fake. I figured it was like a mod or something. But no, after trying it myself, it's definitely real. And for those of you who still don't believe me, I would highly encourage you to verify this yourself. Just type in Sonic the Hedgehog wiener on Google Images. I'm sure you'll find something. But anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for today. I do have one more bonus fact for you though. Did you know that if I say the words smash the like button, then the like button on your screen should light up and play a little animation. And the same thing happens to the subscribe button if I say subscribe. So yeah, there you go. That's a cool little YouTube Easter egg for you that I'm mentioning with absolutely zero ulterior motive whatsoever. And did you also know that if I say consider supporting me on Patreon, there's a chance that you could be treated to some extra content like an alternate opening of this video as well as bonus videos, behind the scenes content, and ad free versions of all my videos? Wow. What a wacky feature those chuckle nuts over at Google headquarters cooked up. Just what will they come up with next? But anyway, hopefully you'll be hearing from me again relatively soon with another video even dumber than this one. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for more garbage. Next video is going to be me and the boys live reacting to the new Sonic X Shadow Generations trailer. Here's a preview. Sonic Generations oh, nah, remastered? Nah. No, just oh, we already have Sonic Generations. We, can't can't we, can't nah, we don't we should, want we any more ask. Green Hill nah, Sega. We want hill. something new. Nah, bro, when is nah, Sega going to gonna understand that just sucks, bringing back bro. old stuff isn't gonna work. Is that Black Poo? That's the best bio lizard? Wow, that's, that's awesome. Old. Wait, so I'm buying this day one. I'm buying this day one. An extra special thanks to Xenon, Rinth Sintik, Laura B, Javier Pedraza Anaya, hope I said that right, and Alan M. Also thank you to Zebra Nick and the rest of my lovely patrons. <laughs>